Hi everyone, so today's topic is a serious, really serious topic and it's one that I've went back and forward about discussing mostly because everything's really fresh and raw for those in this particular story. So most of you in the UK will have seen that a girl called Sophie Graydon died um, in a couple of weeks back. She was on Love Island, so a, a reality TV show here in the UK. I think it was the second series that she was in and she was found dead um, in her home and largely it's been put down to suicide. Sophie was a friend of mine, not a particularly close friend, but I've known her for a very long time. And I knew her from my days when I was young and I was doing a show called Biker Girl, which was a kids TV drama. And she was very good friends with some of the cast members there. And she's just a lovely girl. And I'd watched her for many years. Um, she was the winner of Miss Great Britain. And she was just somebody who was a very social butterfly and always sort of on the cusp of celebrity long before she became a celebrity. And, and a stunningly, stunningly beautiful girl. Um, we hadn't spoken for, for, a very, for a long time. And like I say, we were never particularly like close, close friends or anything. Just an acquaintance for many years. But in the last year or so, we had spoken. She messaged me when my husband died and we spoke a bit further. I messaged her when um, I knew she'd got into Love Island. I don't really watch reality TV, so I didn't watch the show itself. But I kept involved when she was uh, like on Twitter and stuff like that and I just kept an eye out because what's nice is because I've always worked in the entertainment industry sometimes I'll go on Twitter or Facebook and one of my friends will have a verified tick next to their name so they'll get a little blue tick and then I have to be like oh they got famous what did they do like I'll obviously a lot of them will be actors and dancers and models anyway but suddenly I'll say oh they've got a blue tick so they must have been in something recently that's made them famous so that's what happened with Sophie I was like oh okay so she she did get famous what did she do oh she did Love Island so I contacted her and I just wished her good luck and and you know we've spoken back and forward since then because I care I really care when I see people do well and I feel very protective of people in the current climate of fame so when i started on tv really young it was not the levels by any stretch that um people say for for love island and things like that it was not we didn't have social media we didn't have this people didn't have this access to people that are that were on their tellies so thankfully for me i got to do a tv show that people who were fans of the show loved then I would go home to my, my own home and not be bothered again. Unfortunately now, in the current climate, good and bad things from this, but people have access 24 hours a day to those celebrities or people who are on TV. And they think they can say what they want. And this is where the more somber side to this video comes into play because there is an insidious, cruel, evil in some point some parts side to social media there is this feeling that you can say what you want to somebody and certainly if somebody appears to have it all so they're beautiful they have you know appear to have money um and celebrity and fame and, and endorsements with brands people can be horrendous and Sophie was getting absolute abuse online. And there were a few occasions when I saw it on Instagram where I stepped in because I just thought, that's not okay. Like, that's really not okay to tell somebody because they've posted a picture of them in a bikini that they should go and die. That's not okay. And, and the last conversation that I had with Sophie was about this, was about the online trolling and and we kind of joked it off, but obviously it was touching Sophie more. I'm not saying that's the only reason, and I'm really not going to speculate on, on why she died or, or what the, the pushing point was at all. But regardless of that, she was getting a lot of abuse online. And it concerns me that we are living in a culture where 
people are getting famous for next to nothing. I'm not going to say nothing because sometimes they've just got an incredible personality and we used to have that back in the day as well. People were famous for being a cool person that we like to look at. They might be just gorgeous or they might have a fun personality that made us laugh, whatever the reason. That's been around for, for time, but there's now this whole churning, the churning of reality TV stuff where people are just being pushed around this cycle of new beautiful person, man or woman, new beautiful person, out they pop, they get a teeth whitening endorsement, and then, you know, for, for a time they get a million followers, they get the verified ticks on their social media, they have some adoring fans, maybe some obsessive fans, they get lots of letters and messages and, and gifts from companies, and it all feels very exciting for the first year, and then it dies off and then the abuse comes, and then they don't know where to turn after that because getting a real job feels like a failure, real job, whatever that means. Getting, you know, going back to, to anything other than celebrity life feels like a failure and people will make them feel like that. So it's not just a case of pride, it's a case of they will go to a job and they'll get laughed at. They'll go and try and do something and people will point and stare and take photographs. Even if we think we're the strongest people in the world, that's hard to take. And, and frightening and will create anxiety. Getting a certain level of fame can be a weird thing. And I've always, it's a tricky one because I've always dabbled on the edge of stuff because of the TV work that I've done. And, and I've kind of really stayed on, I guess, the safer side of it that I can kind of use the platform that I have for good and, and that makes me feel all right. But it's always kind of scared me to take it to that next level because it can become so intrusive and yes there are plus points to that but it has to have longe longevity your career to have those plus points i think and what's happening is people are coming out of these shows and they don't really have a skill and some of them as nice a people as they might be don't really have a strong enough personality to really make it in that industry not for any long period of time and often people that go into rea reality tv shows lack self-esteem that there are a lot of people that do that for that reason because they're they desperately want some modicum of fame that's gonna fill something that they're not getting for themselves elsewhere and I'm, I'm not trying to make sweeping statements about that at all and of course there will be some very confident very amazing people that go into these shows and it's not a critique of, of those people at all in fact i feel really really protective of those people because i think they get used by often tv companies they get used by them and just churned up and spat back out and when that's done on a, such a public platform as it was for sophie it's really hard to take it's really hard to take and and the sad fact is is that even though sophie died a few weeks ago and and honestly it, it really hit me i I found it really, really distressing because it was just so, it's just such a waste, such a sad waste of a beautiful person, um, both inside and out. And I just I just worry that young people are thinking that this is the only way, like, oh okay, I get the Instagram stuff and it's just not what you think it is. If you had looked at Sophie's um Insta stories the days leading up to her dying, you'd have thought she had it all and maybe she did but she didn't feel it because fame is so flitting. Honestly, it's so nothing. It's not what life is about. You know, I, I, I have it, I've had it kind of thrust in my face so much with Ross, my husband dying last year. God, that's not what life is about. Life is about connection and value and feeling valued and, and feeling like you're putting value into this world. And it's not about the stuff that we're being force fed that it is. And if you're watching this and you're getting sucked into the whole, oh my God, that amazing person on Instagram or that person on Love Island and they've got amazing figures, this, and they're going to get these endorsement deals and it's going to be incredible, their lives. It just, it's not, it ain't all that. It ain't all that. Unless there's other stuff around it. Unless they have that connection, real human connection. And, and they feel valued and they feel like, they're progressing in some way and that it just it isn't enough it's not enough to sustain us as human beings and it just makes me feel so sad and for me 
you guys that follow this will know that you know mindset and positive mindset and how to deal with life and resilience is massively my thing and I just I need to find a way and I don't know how that is yet but I need to find a way to to teach people on a bigger scale resilience and how to create a life that you love not what society tells you it should look like because it, it just doesn't have to be one way we get told it's got to be one certain way and we get sucked into it and we believe all this nonsense and life is just this big stupid game and you can bend it to what you want you've just got to stop playing by everybody else's rules and you've got to recognize that life owes you nothing you've got to make it happen you've got to find those connections and and build that resilience and and I don't know I, it, this is not a thought out video clearly I know a lot of mine don't tend to be but I just feel genuinely heartbroken for Sophie's family and closest friends and really sad that a decent decent person isn't here and and if it is if it does transpire that this trolling and this you know this highs and lows of fame was a contributory factor to her not being here anymore then that's just depressingly sad and we need to all consider our own part in that and you know just try and be nicer to each other you know i get a lot of comments on this channel that are quite disgusting at times disgusting and people think because they're hiding behind a message board and I can't see their face or you know people can't see their faces when they message that it's somehow okay that you let loose on just hateful feelings just to see what the reaction is and it's it's just rank it's just not even it's not even funny it's it's dull it's boring and often when I read them I don't even feel angry I feel sad that you're in that place that you think that is okay so that is my thoughts I hope it reaches somebody and I will do my very best to put good in the world and help people. And I'm sending love to everybody closest to Sophie. So much love. Peace.